All right, so I'm going to be going over how to play ace-king post-flop to get max value. Now, as I'm getting into this topic, I'm going to be breaking down some hands here in Ignition Poker, playing some 1-2-0 no limit. And, of course, if you guys are looking for any good online poker sites, we'll have some bonus and sign-up links in both the description and comments. Now, I will say ace-king can be tricky because sometimes when you overplay it, it can cost you a lot of money. And believe me, there have been times where I've just bluffed every single street, you know, the flop, the turn, and the river, and missed terribly. And when somebody can put you on ace king and they're a decent player you know uh you could end up losing a lot of money so you got to be careful however in this situation we're going to be going over here right after this uh you know queen five or whatever i had i thought i played this hand extremely well and i put the guy on the type of hand that i thought he did but he couldn't put me on what I had, right? So here we go. So I had an ace-king suited. I mean, the hand was just looking super pretty. I actually uh, had this hand in a session just from the other day, but I wanted to just break down my thought process on it because, you know, I thought I, I played the hand really well. Kind of like pat myself on the back right here. All right, so player three raised it up. Now in this spot, I easily could have three bet it, and maybe I should have three bet it, but I decided to just kind of like slow play the ace-king um, and talk about a flop for ace king right now the fact that i slow played it i think worked out in my favor tremendously on this hand because you know if he had a similar type of hand maybe not as good maybe ace queen or ace jack or even ace 10 you know any kind of like suited situation like that you know i could get paid off pretty big on this hand anyways this guy put in a really tiny bet i think it was like three bucks uh, was his continuation bet my thinking here was you know he wanted me to continue calling um, I decided to just kind of like pop it a little bit. So I just raised it to $10, kind of like almost making it look like a, a bluff re-raise, I guess, um, just to kind of see what he would do or where he was at. And there was a spade draw out there as well, right? So I could clearly see there was a spade draw. I wasn't really thinking about that so much. Uh, turn card was a nine. Now, this guy continued betting into it. There were two different... I'm sorry, there was still one flush draw out there. Um, and, you know, I'm still thinking he's got the type of hand I was talking about, like an ace-queen, an ace-jack, or an ace-ten. So I kind of just, you know, waited to see what he would do. Another uh, relatively small bet. So this kind of just told me that he definitely had an ace. Uh, so I re-raised it to like $20. Continuing to put the pressure on here, still kind of making it look like I could be bluffing at it, but maybe not, uh, which kind of just making it harder for him to get a read. Okay, so he basically insta-called it. Uh, four on the river was a great card because, you know, if he has ace-jack or ace-queen or even ace-ten, I don't have to worry about, you know, a full house getting there. Uh, and if he's got that ace, it's going to be really hard for him to fold in this situation. And I knew that, right? Now, there was uh, about $70 in the pot, and yeah, I had to really figure out, like, the right sizing for this. So I thought 80 bucks made sense to me. So that's what I went with here. I went with $80. I thought that was... Uh, you know, not an all-in because an all-in would have, I feel like he probably would have folded, but I felt like 80 was probably enough that if he had that ace, he's going to call me down because the entire time I played this hand, yeah, I was re-raising him, but I also could have had a flush draw. Maybe I got a pair of sevens. I don't know. And, you know, the fact that I didn't three bet it pre-flop with this hand made it even more disguised you know it was just a super disguised hand and he let the clock run down on this one like i said i don't blame him at all uh he is gonna make the call um so i felt like you know i played this hand got as much value and money out of it as i probably could have because if i would have went any bigger on my sizing here i think he might have just folded especially like a hundred bucks or and even an all-in i don't think he was gonna make the call yeah, I mean, I almost guarantee he probably wasn't going to make the call. So 80 was definitely the right amount. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to get to see what he had. Uh, I wish I could have because I really think he had like one of those hands, ace-queen, ace-jack, or ace-ten. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, a quick, uh, you know, hand here. Just talking about ace-king because, I mean, there's definitely so many different ways you can play it. And I just thought this time around being a little bit sneaky about it really worked out in my favor okay hope you enjoyed it smash that like button if you didn't subscribe to the channel for more poker content and we'll see you in the next session